up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yo, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are radio for the local craft beer movement. We're broadcasting from Hop City Craft Beer and Wine in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Tim Dennis. And I'm Brian Hewitt. This week we're talking with Williamson, Michigan's Old Nation Brewing Company. Director of Growth and Strategy, Mark Logos, will be joining us soon to talk about Old Nation's Brewery and Brew Pub in the Michigan Mitten. So, Tim, how was your week? A good week, Brian, a good week. Uh, I look at my beer list and I'm surprised to see how IPA heavy it is these days because, you know, I really used to preach against IPAs, but uh, I'm drinking a lot of, you know, tons of IPAs out there, so... We got to do something pretty cool a little earlier this week. We went over to Sweetwater Brewing where they were launching their 420 strain G13 IPA. And that is the first release in their 420 strain series, which is going to be terpene beer. So they'll have terpene oils and hemp flavorings that will uh, give the aroma similar to different cannabis strains. This one's supposed to smell similar to G13. I can't verify that personally, Brian. Not my thing. But uh, they claim it's pretty spot on, but the beer was very aromatic, is what I'm going to say, Brian. Very aromatic. The aroma filled the room pretty good, and uh, but it didn't translate as much to the flavor. The flavor has got a little of that earthy pungency, but the base beer is just a you know a good IPA, typical Sweetwater IPA. So it's a nice beer. It's going to be tapping around Atlanta soon and uh, head out to distribution before too long. What'd you think of that one? I really liked it. I, I prefer it actually to the Hemperer, which is the the other one that comes to mind. The aroma on this is more subtle. It's not going to fill up an entire restaurant with the aroma of the beer. You're just going to hit the people in this, the booth around you basically when you open it up, but still a nice aroma, a very solid IPA underneath. I, I enjoy drinking it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a one and done beer for me, whereas the Hemperer was yeah. more of a one and done type of deal pretty potent though big yes. aromatics there if you if you like that aroma it's got it there for you for sure so uh what else do you get into this week so i i did a number of uh ipas myself i'm a big fan of them as you know um one of the first places i stopped i uh, stopped at was curahi and i drank a number of their ipas did a little tour there really enjoyed the lucky scars new england ipa that they were pouring uh it's brewed in honor, honor of the military is thank their lucky scars for what the military has done for them but it's a really solid new england ipa enjoyed that brought home a six pack also made a stop over at wrecking bar for their anniversary deal and uh, drank some of that tech ripeness, and you got to love that fruit on the bottom milkshake IPA. Really solid stuff. Drop by Abide, had a strawberry wheat. Uh, very impressive strawberry in a beer. I It's better than most strawberry beers I've had. It's very solid, very worth uh, checking out. And had to round things out at Line Creek, where I enjoyed the Fresh Crush IPA. Very solid IPA, but my heart was stolen by that brewed awakening, that dry Irish stout on nitro. With a little bit of coffee and vanilla, that's that's a quality beer right there. That's really yeah, that tasty. was real tasty. The the coffee and vanilla were pretty light. They did say they'll bump that up a little bit on the next batch, but they don't want it too intense. They want to keep the balance there. So it's going to be cool to see what they come out with in that that brewery there, the actual tap room. That's just amazing. Oh yeah, that's big, open, shiny. They had that giant screen for watching the World Cup. They've got all the room for expansion. Everything looks beautiful. They got a nice diagram of the brewing process on the walls. And I mean, and, and the beer right off the bat is really good. So if they're fine-tuning, tweaking, and making adjustments, I think it's only going to get better. I think that they're they're going to be a force to be reckoned with uh, sometime down the road here. Yeah, you try a new brewery if their beers are pretty good to good. It's always cool to see what they've got six months or a year from now. Sure, sure. You got to learn your equipment. All of it's different. It's all got its quirks and this, that, and the other thing. No matter how long you've been brewing, new equipment is new equipment, right? Got to tune it in. So I think now it's time for us to go to the Truck and Taps Beers of the Week. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. So lots of good beers this week, Brian. As you know, we've been sipping on some of them already. We're going to have a lot of good Old Nation beers today. So Mark was nice enough to bring a few down to share with us. We have got today Old Nation's M43, their flagship Northeast IPA. 
which is actually starting distribution in Atlanta now. And uh, that's going to be the only one we get for a while, just the M43, but definitely a good one to get. We're also going to get into their Boss Tweed, which is a Northeast double IPA, their Full Earth, which is another Northeast double IPA, and we'll also sample Old Nation's Greenstone, which is a double dry hopped American Pell L. So now let's check out what's happening in the news. What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. Good news for anyone opening a brewery soon. The Chinese-made brewing equipment is no longer included in the Trump tariffs. So this change was made recently after a hearing and some feedback from trade associations and other business groups. The tariff would have added a hefty 25% to the price of brewing equipment had it not been exempted. So unfortunately, steel and aluminum are still included in the tariff. And Miller Coors, for example, is estimating that there will be a 10% uh, aluminum tariff that will cost them $40 million. And these tariffs go into effect July 6th. So uh, it's coming up soon. China has announced some retaliatory tariffs, but fortunately, U.S. beer is not included in the list of goods. So if you're selling beer to China, you're still you're still good at this point. You know, I saw that uh, it seems like the whole world now is having these tariff wars with this stuff. I saw that the U.K. had some retaliatory tariffs. and I think bourbon was on that 25 percent tariff, if I remember correctly. That's right. You know, and I have thoughts about that. That kind of almost makes me happy. I'm not pro-tariff, but it kind of makes me happy because that means that maybe bourbon will be a little easier to find, especially the the rare stuff here in the U.S., but Mm. that's purely selfish on my part. Of course it is. Sure. So speaking of aluminum, there are bipartisan calls to investigate the Midwest premium for aluminum pricing irregularities. I didn't even know what the Midwest premium was before now, but uh, thanks to an article on Brewband, I have an idea. The Midwest premium represents the full logistical costs of shipping and storing metal in the U.S. So I guess it's basically like a metal to money exchange rate type of thing. So anyway, a, uh, a group of congressmen have pointed out to the DOJ that there have been some serious pricing irregularities and potential anti competitive conduct by aluminum producers, merchants, traders, banks, and other organizations, and they want an investigation. So just the news of a possible tariff caused aluminum to more than double, so like a 135% increase since January of this year. So people are always already getting clobbered on the aluminum angle of the whole situation here. So so before any time that the uh, the tariffs would have gone into effect, so it's it's it seems suspicious. But the uh, the moral of the story is it's a rough time to can beer, but uh, if you're doing it, please continue because we love cra- uh, canned beer. It's canned craft Keep beer. Keep it coming, man. Keep yeah. it coming. And we've got some uh, World Cup-related beer stories. There are several of them. A brewery in Sweden is printing World Cup tweets on beer foam. That's right. The brewery is Norland's Gold in uh, in Sweden, as I said, and they're calling it the social beer. So apparently people tweet more about the World Cup than any other event ever in the history of tweeting. Uh, back in 2014, it was like six, nearly 700 million tweets, basically, just about the World Cup. The process of printing involves putting a special internet correct connected printer in contact with your beer and it uses a malt based ink to print so you can put down your phone have a good time and still get your world cup updates and so world cup fans are drinking moscow dry uh moscow restaurants and bars are running low and even the supplier stocks are running low apparently they expected the fans would want to drink more than just beer no fans just want to draft lager and gallons of it or liters however but in important news, I got to get in here. Beavertown Brewery, based in London, has sold a minority stake to Heineken. And the rumors about them looking for an investment partner have been going around for a while, for the entire month. The terms of the deal, including the size of it, the stake, has not been made uh, available to the public. But reportedly, they can tap into about $55 million worth of growth capital with this, with this sell. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We need to take a quick break, but we'll be back right after this.
If you love wild, sour, and barrel-aged beers, be sure to check out the amazing offerings from Sweetwater's Woodlands, the Atlanta Brewery's barrel-aging facility. For the serious craft beer fan, the Woodlands Circle Beer Club offers members six unique exclusive bottles plus other great perks. Series 2 is starting soon with more creative offerings from Cellarman Nick B. Visit the Woodlands in Atlanta, Georgia, follow Sweetwater Brew on social media, or get more information and sign up at sweetwaterbrew.com slash club. That's sweetwaterbrew.com slash club. It's Aaron and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Aaron. See, they've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I didn't enjoy it at all. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. For more great craft beer info, visit us on the web at beerguysradio.com. We're back with Old Nation Brewing Company talking with Director of Growth and Strategy, Mark Logos. Hello. Mark, thanks again for joining us, man. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So we've been sipping your beers here, and we're currently on the Old Nation beer, as you might say, M43. And that's what we're here for today, for the launch of it in uh, the Atlanta market, distribution in the Atlanta market. And uh, tell us about M43. So M43 is a uh, uh, hazy, fruity, not bitter IPA, a juicy IPA, New England um, uh, northeast, you know, it, it's got a hundred names, um, but it is uh, it is our flagship uh, juicy IPA, New England IPA. Um, it is uh, 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 the grain bill is uh, pills, wheat, and um, oat, and. Uh, I'm trying to find the can here. He's because I, forgot. I am cheating. He's cheating. He's cheating. So, yeah. so you got to do that sometimes. It's so funny because uh, I was I was just about to read read the uh, the new uh, double IPA grain bill. Um, yeah, and uh, we uh, boil with Calypso, Amarillo, and Citra, and we dry hop with Citra, Amarillo, and Simcoe. Um, and uh, so this this beer um, sort of turned this turned our, our humble continental very technical brewery um, into a um, uh, a hazy hop uh, behemoth that we are right now, which is something that we're still not getting quite used to. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's a uh, it's a beer you can't see through that uh, isn't bitter, um, and uh, you know the folks seem to like it. So as you were saying, that's that beer was a bit of a game changer for Old Nation. Uh, you had some growing pains as, as a result of that, going from like 1,200, uh, 1200 barrels in 2016 to like, I think 20,000. Is that right? Yeah, we did have some growing pains. The um, We went from 1,200 to uh, in 15 to 7,616. Um, and... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 16 and 17, and then this year looks like it, we're going to do uh, around 16, 17,000. So that's a huge jump. Um, and uh, uh, what was interesting as far as uh, when M43 came to, came to be, we did not have uh, uh, the cap- we, we had about 5% capacity we were, we were brewing at the time. And uh, it was all continental beer. It was all um, a very traditional, technically accurate beer. Um, it was the, the beer was great, but it was uh, not what anybody wanted to drink. So we made a bunch of it. We sent it to the distributor, and then it sat and it sat and it sat. Yeah, because you can make a beer that's technically flawless, but it doesn't mean it's interesting or has character Absolutely. there. So, and that's something we've talked a lot about with home brewing. You know, when you have to, a lot of people are brew to these standards, the BJCP standards. And uh, I've judged beers before where people have tasted them are like, well, it, it hits everything, you know, perfect. It's just not a lot of life to it there. Yeah, I mean, there's a difference between a, a great beer and a well-marketed beer. You That's know? true. Yeah, there um, are a lot of really good beers that when they were not available in the area, 
you couldn't find them. People, high trade values. They come to the area. They sit on the shelves. They're right. great beers still. Right. They're still wonderful. They're sitting on shelves now because that marketing, that hype, you know? Yeah. The hype, man. It gets so it there. I think we, you know, this this beer for us was was three things. It was, uh, it, it is a very well executed beer. Um, but it was, it happened at a time where we had a lot of available capacity and, um, it also, uh, caught the local beer community, um, as kind of one of their own, you know, the, the local beer community advocated for it really well. So those three things really pushed it to, to the volume that it is in Michigan. And now we can't keep it on the shelf. Very good stuff. So Mark, let's talk about you. So you've just had a big career change recently, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Took a, quite a, quite a twist there. How? Did you end up in the world of craft beer? Uh, so uh, I was an avid home brewer. Um, uh, I say avid. I was a home brewer. I was a mediocre home brewer. Um, but uh, yeah, I was also part of one of these um, Facebook groups that everybody talks about craft beer. And um, right around the same time that um, that Old Nation was going through their... Um, their conversion from a continental craft craft beer provider uh, um, brewer to uh, to something else. Um, they they also began to engage with with the craft beer community, and that's kind of taboo. You know, brewers don't really hop in and talk to the craft beer community because they I don't know why, but they don't typically. It does. We've um, got here in Atlanta. We've got some that engage a lot, yeah. and some you just never hear anything from. Yeah, and I think that's probably typical um, around. You know, I think that what you what you find is that there are uh, the the brewers may, might uh, uh, have heard the same thing so many times. You know, and, and I certainly understand that that they just don't want to hear it anymore. Sure, um, but then. Uh, and, and that was the case with Travis Fritz, our um, our uh, owner and uh, our co-owner and head brewer. So he did engage though with this group, um, and it was about a conversation about juicy, hazy beers. And the question on the table was, um, is this essentially is this legitimate? And this was two years ago. Um, so he had he's a, a, a scientist, a food scientist, and uh, uh, by trade he was trained at the Technical University in Berlin. Uh, about 15 years ago so he, he definitely knows what he's talking about as it relates to the science behind brewing and so he weighed in as a scientist and um and so he enlightened some folks as it as it relates to the biotransformation of hops which i'm sure you guys have talked about sure um and things like that uh he uh but he he closed his uh, little uh, Facebook diatribe with hey if you guys want to come out if a handful of you guys want to come out and brew with us um then you know I'm going to be making one of these in our pilot system in the next few weeks. So come on out. So um, I was one of the I was one of the six that came out. Okay. So All right. I was a I was a previous I was a, a director of operations at a multi million dollar telecommunications company and um, and that was great um, in the lamest sense of the word. I mean right. it was yeah. a very well paying <laughs> you know boring job and. Uh, uh, Beautiful cubicles, though, right? They, they yes. were, they were well, the, like finest the, gray, the finest cube. The finest yes. of the gray. Yeah. I've seen those. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. um, the extra high walls. Right. Um, oh, so, those are choice. Yeah. And uh, so I was one of the six, and I took some of my project management skills to wrangle up the other five to make sure that I was one of the six that could go out. Um, we all went out there, and, and I was part of uh, brewing the first batch of M43. And when I say part of brewing the first batch, I mean I hauled a single sack of grain up the stairs, and the brewers did all the, all the real work. Um, but when you do that, when it hits the market, you can go out, you're like, I helped brew that we beer. Have, we I have just, pictures that show that, that, that I yes. were there, so that's There's good There's a bag me. of grain right, right there in my hand. Yes, at least one it. bag. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, so those uh, those brewers are extraordinarily talented, and uh, and so they, on, on October 15th of 2016, uh, the first um, batch of M43 was kegged, and, uh, and it was pretty well received. Um, so I... Uh, uh, I, I, I had continued to hang out with Travis and, and, and talk to him a little bit. Um, ended up doing some uh, some free consulting, uh, which turned into paid consulting, which turned into a full time gig. So, okay. uh, the, so that's the um, that's sort of my story um, on how I got to be, with, um, in my opinion, the coolest brewery in Michigan. Absolutely. So, man. speaking of the founders, Travis uh, Fritz and Rick Gersey, I believe I got his name right. Yeah. Uh, so they were professional brewers before they uh, they quote unquote said before that was cool. 
Uh, why did they start? They decide to start Old Nation. Yeah, uh, Travis is the brewer. Rick is the uh, um, the, um, the money guy. But uh, yeah, they were um, uh, they were they've been together for a few other different projects too. And they uh, um, because they they've been brewing for so Rick, Travis has been brewing for so long. Um, he but he's been brewing for other organizations and, and he was a a, a um, traveling brewer for a while and, and made uh, an alt beer called the Detroit Dwarf, which was an award winning alt beer. Again, very traditional, you know, uh, technically accurate, great beer, um, and uh, and so this was their opportunity to do it their way. Um, so uh, they they built a, a huge facility out in a cornfield, um, and it's uh, it's attached to a great restaurant. Travis's wife Camilla runs the restaurant, um, and we've got Midwestern comfort food in there. So it's it's really they built exactly what they wanted to. I want to talk to you about that Midwestern comfort food, but we do need to take a quick break. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show, and we'll be back right after this. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged hoppy and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also, visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the Reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowah watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I meant to do that. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We want to give a shout out to one of our great radio affiliates, WRKQ, 1250 AM in Madisonville, Tennessee. Catch Beer Guys Radio on WRKQ every Saturday at noon Eastern. Now let's hear more from Old Nation Brewing Company's Mark Logos. Mark, I think uh, when we went to break, we were about to talk about your brew pub, but you got a beer there you're about to open for us. What first are we things getting first, into, right? man? Yeah. All right. So this right here. Oh, yeah. Sounds is, good. Uh, is our Boss Tweed Double IPA. Now, this one just uh, um, is taking a few month break. Uh, this is our one of our fall fall beers. So it'll be back in the fall. Um, but folks seem to like this one. It's a 9.3% uh, uh, hazy double IPA, uh, Pills Wheat, Oat, and V on the malt bill, um, Magnum, Simcoe, Citra, Mosaic. I'm reading from the can again. Okay. Uh, in the boil, <laughs> and uh, Simcoe, Citra, Mosaic, and Azaka um, in the uh, the dry hop. So uh, this this is for a very very long time was my favorite go to everyday drinker. And boy, for uh, you know to have your, a 9.3 percent double IPA beer everyday drinker as your daily. That's right? what I was yes. going to say. I yeah. see that that's 9.3 percent. Doesn't come every with every day. Yeah, it doesn't come with the seed belt, but it should. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we tried a 12 percent session quad from a brewery. Yeah. That's uh, session quad. So, yeah, that's, exactly. That's brilliant. <laughs> it's one of those things as a as a growth marketing guy. That's I I wish that I would have come up that with something was it. ridiculous. Like a session quad. Good That's stuff. Great. So, so but pass your glasses on yeah, over here. Let's get and into it, man. Here we go. So, so the brew pub. Uh, you know, I took a little look there, and there were some there were some dishes on there that we don't see down here in our neck of the woods. I can imagine as that's you the case. Say. Yeah. So, yeah. there were pasties, yeah. which I'm you familiar. Said that right. I appreciate. I'm that. familiar with, but did not know. I had yeah. to I had to Google it. I had to go to YouTube to make sure I didn't I didn't talk about some. Uh, ladies appliques instead so you know make sure we get that right yeah, but right. uh you know and i'm surprised that those are not more popular everywhere really i mean a meat uh, i mean a handheld it, meat pot, yeah, right it, it looks like southern food to me yes exactly um, but it's they're just they're great you know they do a, a cold soaked dough so everything that we do in our kitchen is is absolutely from scratch and, um and uh people come for the for the pasties um and uh, you, you know that you did it right when you get a review that says 
says, you know, I came from the UP and came down and had your pasty, and I thought it was great. Because that's a that's a Uper food, right? For sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Brian, I don't know if you saw this. They have a one pound pretzel there. I I heard rumors of this, yeah, and they I, say I it's was shareable. Well, I don't think that's required. I don't no, think, just I don't think FYI, I would need to share that or want to really. Suggestion. Yeah. So with the brew pub, how close does the brew pub uh, kitchen work with the brewers and vice versa? Do they look to make things that that pair? Um, uh, somewhat. Uh, the food pair. I mean, the, the the kitchen will always do this Midwestern comfort food thing. Um, they have autonomy in what they come up with. Uh, the beer that we make is a. Even though today we're going to talk about four hazy IPAs, um, we we have fourteen beers on tap of every style. So uh, th- we will then pair those and give suggestions based on on the kinds of beer that are on tap um, to to what the food is in the kitchen. So that brings me to a really good question: What's your favorite brew pub beer and food combo? Well. So I think what I what I need to um, really uh, pump up is what I eat at the at the brew pub, which is the avocado steakhouse burger. Um, it sounds a, it's, good. It's a tie between the avocado steakhouse burger, which I'll have with a something like a Boss Tweeter and M43, um, or uh, the I guess my absolute favorite guilty pleasure is the poutine. You guys familiar with poutine? Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes. Yes, indeed. So uh, we do it with a, a spicy gravy and jalapeno and fried egg on top. That's jalapenos. Count me in. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't had uh, jalapenos on there before, but I'm I'm not opposed to it at all. Yeah. I saw a beer fest the a uh, couple weeks ago on Facebook. Yeah, I think it was in Toronto, maybe, but it was the uh, beer and poutine fest. And I'm like, this is this is everything I like. Somebody in life. call me, man. please. Right, somebody call me. That might be they the greatest need, beer fest of all time. They need some old nation yeah. beer at that, don't and, they? And old nation poutine. Absolutely, yeah. good stuff, man. Good stuff. So. Uh, talking about the variety of styles that you guys do, you know, at the brewery and that, uh, I saw that your your founders, when they brew, that they bring not only ingredients from all disciplines, the formats, the methods as well, looking at uh, Belgian, English, and all that. What are some ways that they kind of implement that m- mesh of styles? Oh, that's a really good question. So I, I think the best example of that is in our brew house itself, and that it is a four-vessel brew house. Most brew houses are not a four-vessel brew house. They're a three-vessel brew house. Um, the hot liquor tank, the mash tun, and the boil kettle. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a fourth vessel, which allows for um, for separate whirlpooling as well. So it just it gives the brewers the ability to dial in uh, whether they're um, step mashing or decocting or, or going through um, the, the technical process as as, as a traditional German brewer would. Um, so that's, I, you know, we don't do a lot of, you know, Belgian lambic blending. Okay. Um, or we don't have a, a full bone sour program. Uh, much to the chagrin of our head brewer, Nate Rixey, who would love to do that stuff, and I'm sure that's going to be um, in the future, but uh, because he is he is definitely trained in, in those uh, in those disciplines. But um, yeah, I'd say the best example of that would be right inside the brew house. Okay, very cool. Now talking about brew and other things, and kind of going back to M43, we've seen this with a lot of breweries. You you put a lot of styles out there, you know, maybe nothing catches on, but then you have one that just catches wildfire. Right. And it totally changes the game for you. It, it becomes about that's the that's the only beer you can brew, right? Now, I'm sure you guys went through that period, correct? We're in the middle of that now. M43 okay. is, uh, I think, at, at last, last time I saw the product mix, about 92% of our uh, throughput. Um, and you know, for that's a, like that's a production brewer's dream, right? They can do the same thing every time and 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 hone the beer and, and make it and keep it perfect. Um, but that uh, that does you know the that, that's not a good long term strategy. Um, so we are. Uh, uh, we are. We, we just. We just uh, put in a new pilot system. It's a ten barrel pilot system, and we uh, have a bunch of ten, twenty barrel fermenters. So they get to play on that and, and expand the, the range of styles that, that these talented brewers can, can do. Very awesome. Um, yeah, they just. Uh, I, I heard rumor of a uh, honey saison was was the uh, the next thing that was going to go. Okay, on interesting. Yeah, interesting. You know this boss tweed. I'm a little, uh, you know, scared to say this. I may like this a little better than M43. I, I have heard that before, and that's and I, and that's not down in M43 at all because I've had several M43s. It's a great beer, but I got a little more grapefruity citrus kind of sure in, in the finish of it. That's that's right. That's excellent. I it's, like that. It's so incredibly juicy. I I really enjoy that. 
foot, and it's got a little bit of that, a little bit of that bite, the hop bite, and it's yeah. it fits the style. It's the bite is just right for where it's at. It is a body, very good. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really. What you nice. don't get a lot of is the alcohol burn at nine point two. No, you don't. Um, which is which dangerous. is why you can that's set around drink, beer. be in your yeah. daily beer, right? <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. So that's we want to talk, Brian. I think you may have a little more information on the uh, the festival, the Williamston International Festival yeah. of Loggers, correct? Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask about that. I was looking into it to see what what that was all about, and that was something you guys put on, correct? To kind of lure, to just bring people in. You actually brought international lager producers into a very small town, and you, you made a small town international. Basically, uh, what what was that all about? So. Um, uh, Travis Fritz, our, our co-owner and uh, head brewer, is the um, the biggest lager fan on the planet. He uh, um, and he had always said, when uh, hey, when this M forty three thing, since this M forty three thing has caught on, wouldn't it be great if we threw a lager festival, which is the exact opposite, you know? And, and the way that he puts it is, wouldn't it be great if we threw a lager festival and nobody came? But I loved it, you know. And, um, and so, uh, walking and, around in the empty, and it's just fest, him, just yeah. drinking lagers, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, fifty of his favorite beers, and nobody else showed up. Um, but uh, instead, we so we took that idea, and instead, what we did is we partnered with a local charity called Weekend Survival Kits, which makes sure that um, kids who don't get food um, through the week has have food on the weekend. Um, and we partnered with with them to throw this festival in. In Williamston, in the uh, um, in the park right there, and so we had uh, um, thirty breweries, fifty different beers, m- many of which did not and won't distribute in Michigan. So it was one of those invitational type uh, festivals with only lagers, and it was great. And a bunch of people showed up and drank beer that they'd never had before. It was food trucks and music, and we're definitely going to do it again next year. Sounds awesome. We're going to talk to you more and drink more of your beer in just a minute, but we need to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged hoppy and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also, visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Are you thinking about opening a brewery in the Atlanta area? If so, take a look at the park at Georgetown. This unique community will feature a collection of restaurants as well as a craft brewery located within the new JW Homes luxury development, Dunwoody Green. Conveniently located less than half a mile from I-285, this enclave of restaurants will be the gathering place in Dunwoody. Trim and Associates, the developer of the park at Georgetown, wants to talk to you. For more information, call Stephen St. Paul at 404-256-2960, extension 5. That's 404-256-2960, extension 5. The Old 320 Beer Fest returns to Max Lagers in Atlanta, Georgia on July 21st, 2018. Attendees can enjoy unlimited beer samples from over 30 of the best southern breweries, an orphan bottle share, a chef's tasting room with gourmet bites from brewed to serve chefs, and live entertainment from grateful dude and friends. Plus, enter the raffle for a chance to win an ultimate beer tour of Belgium and Germany with Brutopia events. Find the old 320 Beer Fest on Facebook or Fresh Ticks for more info or to purchase your tickets now. Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Oh, God, here we go again. Dork alert. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Make sure to follow us on the socials, Beer Guys Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're broadcasting from Hop City Craft Beer and Wine in Atlanta, Georgia, talking to Mark Logos of Old Nation Brewing Company. This is Mark. We just enjoyed Boss Tweed. I enjoyed that one quite a lot, but you got another one there that you're I, ready to crack for I, us. What are we getting into now? I have another one. Do I get to pick which one? You pick. I'm absolutely. Picking. All right. So this one right here is uh, the Greenstone American Pale Ale. It's got a, a little bit of a rye backbone. Um, so you get that earthy, not overly peppery, but certainly a little bit of an earthy, um, still a hazy beer. Um, everything I brought today was hazy. 
Um, I like how you say that as as like just to reassure you guys. <laughs> just, it's still a hazy <laughs> beer. Man. Don't worry. Um, I was feeling anxiety about yeah, lack of haze yeah, potential. Yeah, so right. I, I didn't bring a you know there's there's not a Kolsch on the table. I, I love Kolsch, <laughs> one of my favorite kind of beers, but I didn't bring any. Some crystal um, pilsners and right, stuff yeah. in here. Right. <laughs> um, so this one is uh, near and dear to my heart. It uh, it is a five and a half percent. So um, our M43 6.8, Boss Tweed is 9.2, um, and that's pretty much where we live. And then when uh, when we decided to do this 5.5%, um, uh, Rye APA, I was super excited. Uh, and I this is the beer that, I mean, I know I just said that I drink the heck out of the Boss Tweed, but I drink the heck out of all these beers. So They're all uh, daily sippers, right? Yeah, yeah, right. I, just, I, I go through a little rotation. Um, and the uh, so the Greenstone, it's going to be the... Uh, for me, it's one of the most flavorful five and a half percents you're going to find. I mean, it, keep in mind too, you just had this after a nine point one percent, right? Bubble, yeah, right? and it does taste lighter on the palate. Sure, you know, yeah. a, which it should, of course, absolutely. But again, very tasty stuff. Yeah. And if I remember right, Mark, that that is one of the beers that you guys use local Michigan hops in. Is that correct? Absolutely. Um, and so people always think that the you know the pacific northwest hops and you know that's where it's got to be it's got to be citra to be juicy stuff like that um i've got two beers here that beg to differ um you can get a a big punchy flavorful snappy uh beer um in the same category using um some of the finest michigan hops out there so we're here today at your official launch in the Atlanta market. Is is this your first market expansion outside of Michigan, or what else do you guys have going on? So it, it's it's not our first. It's it's certainly our our largest um, to date so far. Uh, so we we have a little bit of beer in outstate Illinois. We have a little bit of beer. Uh, we shipped a little bit of beer out to Denmark. Um, Denmark. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, it, it's it, we don't pick our distributors based on um, uh, what's convenient regionally. I know you know logistics is a big part of it, but um, it, we picked Atlanta uh, because of uh, the way that our distributor, uh, Modern Hops, uh, has been working with us. The way that um, we were received at the Day of the Juice. I think you guys were there. Um, we received you indeed. Quite a bit <laughs> day we the received juice. you yeah. well. I, I, I did listen back to that episode. That was uh, <laughs> you guys were great. Um, and uh, I think. Thank you. Uh, you for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me employed. Um, and um, um, so the combination of the the online Atlanta beer community, which is um, which is fantastic, the, uh, the distributor and the I don't know re- real time market viability that we had in in um, that festival, and uh, and what's going on now at, at Hop City and, and places around town. Um, we uh, we made an arrangement with Modern Hop to get beer down here. It made it, so it made sense for the beer. It made sense for the people. I'm not just going to put beer in the state next to me because they're close. And you know, shout out to Modern Hops for some of the beers they're bringing to Georgia. I mean, they're bringing a lot Seriously. of great stuff like this. And for that festival they put on, we did a show from Day of the Juice and talked to some great breweries there. But that was just an awesome uh, be, uh, festival, just full of some really. Nice, hoppy, hazy beers. A few others, not so hazy, but True, a very yeah. juicy day all around. It was a good time. Something really cool for Atlanta. You know, we have we have a ton of beer fest here. You know, it can get kind of saturated with beer fest where everything is, it's another beer fest, another right. beer fest. But yeah. we have a few that really set themselves apart. There's definitely one that did that. It was really cool. Yeah, I wish I could have made it. So you, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to know a little bit more. We're glad to have you here. Thank you. But how did that Denmark thing happen? <laughs> that's that's interesting. Is yeah. that is that like a Mickler thing? Or is that it, a hookup there? It kind or? of was. Yeah. Um, so uh, the uh, the the McKellar Epic Brothers, um, Evil Twin, not Epic, um, got uh, um, got a hold of us and worked with us and kind of taught us how to export, which um, is not hard at all turns out okay it's uh far easier to send beer to denmark than it is to send beer um across state lines to georgia to, to, right well yeah, yeah or, or really? for us ohio or whatever it doesn't right. matter how far um way way easier um so we uh so we put and it wasn't a lot of beer but we did send some beer out there and you know it's it's fun for us to just you know drop a couple pallets out there and see how it goes um and collect data you know um it's fun for everyone it's fun for them it's fun for me because i'm a numbers guy so i like to you know figure out you know if it if it worked, is it something that we could scale or, do, you know, whatever. Um, build a secret brewery in a bunker in Germany and, you know, I don't know. Um, it's like the hunters that put out, like, deer or corn in a deer field yeah. and go back. They're like, oh, they ate a lot of that corn. <laughs> <laughs> this, it, it, this is good hunting territory. You know, that is a fantastic analogy <laughs> because, it, you know, it's it kind of like that. You know, I, we seed the market a little bit and see, 
um, and see how many deer eat the corn. How was the reception? They, they loved it. Yeah, okay. Um, it went really well. They tried. Uh, we we they, they want us to send more, and we're trying to make it work. You know, based on the stories on the internet, I still can't figure out if the uh, McKellar evil twin guys, if they you know get along or hate each other there so, so i sure. don't have a lot of inside information as it relates to that but one did refer to the other one to get a question answered for me so they're at least on speaking terms. at least speaking terms <laughs> yeah. you don't know how he maybe sent an email you don't know how the intro to the email was but at least right. he got the answer you needed right, right? so i've so wondered if that was a little bit of theater myself I, sure. just a little bit of that's, drama. that's why i kind yeah. of wondered yeah. as well absolutely yeah, yeah. So we want to talk a little bit more about some of your other beers. Let's do it. So we've got a lot here that we've been drinking. We've talked about M43. So I do want to, a little more M43 talk. You've done a lot of variants on that one. We've so done a couple. There's, there's yeah. been... Uh, Much to the chagrin of our, of our head brewer. This is not see? his... That's not, not his thing. It. He doesn't no, want that. Huh? No. I mean, he's a German jaded brewer. You know? uh, okay. Like he... Uh, I mean, he's a super so, nice guy, but, but but when we talk about, you know, putting stuff inside a beer, it's not really his bag. You know, I always got a kick of beer geeks if you talk about shoving an orange wedge on a glass of half of ice and they snub their noses. Right. But if you put 42 pounds of oranges in that glass right. of IPA, they're... Completely they're fine with it. Totally oh, cool. yeah. That's totally cool. Yeah. That's totally cool. So ISO, right. Tim. ISO. <laughs> yeah. So I see you've done, talking to the variants there, there was a strawberry, there was a creamsicle, a mango, a chocolate orange. A pineapple. Yeah. What's the craziest variant of ginger. that beer you've done? Ginger. Ginger, ginger IPA, huh? Ginger M43. It also almost killed our lead production brewer. Um, because okay. He's, uh, uh, I totally forgot about this until you said, uh, until I said ginger. So um, we were messing around with, and we, uh, we were messing around with some different flavor combinations. And uh, we had pulled a lot of flavors out, and, and we had the test tubes out, and the pitchers, and whatever, and, and had a good time. And, and I'd made this little concoction, and I handed it over to our lead production brewer, Matt. And, uh, and I said, taste this and tell me what you think. And he tasted it and he thought about it. And he said, I don't know. What, what, what did you just give me? And I said, well, you know, it's, it was ginger, ginger at 43. And he said, okay, so I'm super allergic to ginger, like anaphylactic shock oh. um, allergic. Um, so uh, I basically followed him around the brewery. He went from, he, it was a rough couple hours, but he was fine. Like no hospital visit or anything. That's good. Was your yeah. immediate response when he said that? Who in the world is allergic to ginger? Uh, yeah. I, like, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I really, I was speechless at the time. I, sure. I, I of course, you know, of, of course I would give you the one thing that you were allergic to and it was That's ginger, right. But, That's the way it works out. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So not intentionally the craziest, but. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the, the, yeah, it was, um, that was a rough one. We called it the Matt Murderer. Come out. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what a great name for I a read beer. A, I read a really long uh, uh, post on your blog about fruit additions to beer and how you, if you really considered it, you really thought it through or yeah. uh, you know, the, the brewers have and all the things that happen. And uh, I, it's, I don't even know if I have a question with this, but it's interesting. So you use uh, some like natural extracts to enhance the flavors of certain beers and you, you have very specific ways of brewing to ensure that the... Uh, the the beers are shelf stable for a, a, a good period of time. Right, we do, and uh, I th- so the blog post that you're referring to was. Um, I, I think it's a great read for anybody who's interested in, in learning that side of this business. But uh, uh, it was our it was Travis, our uh, co-owner, and, and head brewer, talking about the different ways that beers can be fruited, um, from whether it's the you know the old lambic method to squirting some extract into a can or into a keg and calling it good. And so he, he walks through each one of those. And, and the way that we did the strawberry was with extract, and we talked about why and, and how strawberry itself doesn't really have a flavor, but it's the potassium that you're tasting. So strawberry doesn't, doesn't if you were to use actual strawberries, it's, it doesn't translate well into a beer flavor. It doesn't, no. Um, so uh, the strawberry was more of an excuse um, to talk about the extract, the turned strawberry at 43. Very cool. Mark, you know what? Sometimes an hour goes by really fast. We've enjoyed some great beers, great conversation. And that about does it for the Beer Guys Radio Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us this week. Remember to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a review. Let us know what you think. We'd really appreciate it. If you really enjoy the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can support us for just $1. Go to patreon.com slash beerguys. And if you really want the VIP treatment, if you support us at $10 a month or more, you'll get every show early with absolutely no commercials. So thanks again for tuning in. Remember to drink local. Cheers. Cheers.